Paz has been an alumni and a community liaison with PLACE since 2016. She has worked tirelessly for 13 years with Boys and Girls Clubs of San Francisco, most recently as a director of Citywide Creative Arts. She is on the board of the Arts Education Alliance for the Bay Area, an S of Human Rights Working Group around anti-racism and equity. She is working to bring place and healing art workshops to the Central Valley. She's doing very important work. And let's have Paz come to the place stage. Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Well, I hope I'm not a stage. It looks like a backyard to me, but I'll, I'll take it. Um, first of all, I want to welcome you um, to the land of the Yoquat. Uh, people and also honor all the ancestors here today. My own ancestors from the Mexica tradition. Um, my name is Patricia Ann Zamora and the acronym is PAZ, which means peace in Spanish. And that, that is my artist name. Um, I wanna give a shout out to the Play Sisters um, for just their beauty and their words and their, everything that they have done and shown and, and, are, and are doing for themselves. Um, to grow for others. The place team, Chris, for helping us um, be that eye on our, our process and our technique. Aran for co-facilitating um, place along with Cynthia, who is the founder of place. And Cynthia has been um, both everyone, but especially I wanna give a shout out to Cynthia just for being unconditional love and support. And uh, not only to the group, but she also works with takes a time one-on-one. -on -one. And so I just really, she has a very special uh, spirit in this world. And as was mentioned, this is my third time in place residency. And you might say, well, why? Why are you going three times? Aren't you healed already? And no, that's not the way it works. And um, each residency, and I'll talk more about that, but each residency with place in six months has been unique. There's a very beautiful curriculum, a very creative curriculum that um, all the Play Sisters have talked about that um, Cynthia has put together for, for healing. And, but, and what I found was that there were so many things that I learned, but there came this moment where there was this part of the curriculum I just could, I had to go deeper. And that for me was the family patterns and looking at how we hold the energy in our body. And if you have never done a family map of your, uh, it's, not a, it's not a family map where you just, okay, this is my uncle, my aunt. This is where you trace out who, who, was in, who drank, who hurt people, who was hurt in so many ways. And I was able to trace seven generations in my family. And I started to see, I used to only see myself as one tree and I started to see the forest and just how big and deep the trauma had been, not only for my family, but for people of color in this country and in this world. And so what happened was I started to see not only what had happened in the past, because you start putting names and who did what and what was the impact, but I started putting the names of the, the future generations. And I feel like I have to share this because these are people I love so much. Just like you all have people you love in your life. You don't want to see them go down the same road. And when you see that happening, it, it hurts you. And so one of the things I started to do was we did intuitive collage. We did the rocks. We did all kinds of activities. and. We did the love letter and so kind of like an ant that goes out of the ant hill and then you go back in and you bring um yeah thank you you bring it back to your to the to the others and so this right here these first two pieces you see are actually my um interpretation of the generations and you can see it's in my body that's actually an outline of my body because when we don't heal our trauma it starts to affect our body our spirit, our mind, our, our disease, dis-ease. And the second one is the same idea of the chakras and of the generations. And so you see like root, power, creativity, the heart, the voice, the vision, the spirit. And so um, 
I was really lucky that next next slide. Next slide. So I was really lucky that, like I said, I started to bring this back to my family. And you see here, this is in the home I'm at right now is in my mother's backyard. And we're this is like four generations of family members. Um, and some of them are on today with me. And some of them, my sisters here sitting with me. Some of them are in the house. My, my auntie was here, my mom was 88 and my other sister, but um, it has meant a lot of support and they allowed me to bring back these different ways to help not only understand my healing, but the healing of our collective family and the bigger community because many of my family members are very involved in the church and they are very committed to helping others to heal. Next slide. And so you see this is a, co a collection of their collages that they made, intuitive collages. This is a picture of my goddaughter Adriana, my sister Linda, my mother, uh, looking at the artwork that was created. Next slide. And here you see we, we had a show, uh, Marin Mocha, Hungry Ghost Show. That's on the right side. But on the left side, I did a little pre-show with my family and they actually looked at all the pieces. I had a chance to talk to them about why was I doing this art and why did it, why did they matter to me so much? And so that's those two pictures. And my niece, Ayana, is here at the show at Marin Mo because she was nine years old and she actually got up and spoke about what she, how she wishes for her family to be, continue to be strong. And so usually when I do the artist talk, I do have family members who come and they'll speak out as well. Next slide. Um, you're gonna notice approach or a theme. Um, so a place for me, I mean, it's just been really important to um, bring in as many people that were open and not impose it on people, but just to bring it to them as a gift, as an offering and to, to, to use it as a way to explore my own family healing because sometimes we go out in the community and we're wounded healers and we're trying to help others and we haven't even dealt with our own pain and trauma. And that's where, that's what place allowed me to see, but also gave me tools to address it. And this here, if I had a place of my own, it was during the pandemic. And so I decided with the support of my beloved Michael War to shelter in place with my mother and sisters. And, you know, everybody in the Central Valley is a hot spot. You know, um, my family work at the Foster Farms Chicken Flat right now. They had to close it down because people have, have been dying. I think over 300 people were, have been affected. And so, and these are the people that are putting food on our tables. And so I was just right in the middle of all this. And I'm like, how do you get peace in this? How do you get a place of your own? What does that mean in these times? Uh, and so in this seeing the, the global and the climate, like right here, it's like 103 degrees out here. It's so hot and there's, it's a drought. And you see what's happening around the world. And we live, I'm not gonna go into it a lot, but like um, other sisters were saying, you're seeing so much destruction and it's not necessary. It is not necessary for people to have to suffer like that. And so when I started to think about a place of my own, I felt a way I could do that very concretely was starting with this land that I'm sitting on. Um, this is a picture of what it looked like when I first, it was all dry. And then my sister Eva and I would go out every morning and she would water it and we put compost and all those stones, my father brought them from the from the foothills and each of them is a prayer to my family, a family member. And you can see here, it's actually a big green circle. Um, and so when we were having like, a lot of traumas came up during the pandemic. And so what we would do, sometimes we would, it was not easy. Healing is not easy. It's not kumbaya. It's not kumbaya and nor should it be. And um, we, would, we would meet at like eight in the morning and there we would start like talking about how we were feeling, what was going on. And the land, taking care of that land, not putting chemicals on it, um, putting compost, watering it, all those things were ways that um, we were able to heal. Next slide. And the second um, 
part of my place of my own was um, just ancestral trauma and COVID. Like I said, I actually um, incorporated the clothesline of my mother, uh, which you'll see in a minute, um, which is kind of like one thing I'm learning about trauma is that there's so much shame around it and there's so much pressure in this way, this colonized way to um, not really go to the roots. And it's like a tree, this tree I'm sitting under. If you can't heal those roots, the leaves are not going to, they're going to die if we don't deal with the roots. And so I put it kind of like hanging out the dirty laundry and facing my fears. And place has been a place to do that through art and healing. Uh, next slide. That's a picture of my mother um, who was um, would take pictures. She'd come on and talk to me, my sister. Uh, we were playing around with like, well, what should it say on there? Well, you know, and so her work was heal my heal thy was heal her soul, because she's also going through her healing journey. Next slide. And so this is another iteration of playing with it. This is my sister Martha, and we do a very emergent type of art. Uh, it's really up until the last minute. It's not about perfection. It's not about okay, I'm going to be an, ex an artist, now I'm going to go sell at SF MoMA. That's not my dream. My dream is that art is, what Cynthia is doing is that it's a tool for healing, a tool for connecting, for understanding. And sometimes we have really hard talks in place, but we create beauty from that, um, from that trauma and it gets transformed into our potential to go past our pain. And so this was another iteration. As you see, we're experimenting with the letters. And this was in the garage last night. And my sister was helping me cut the letters and just being a real great support. Next slide. And this is just some more what you'll see right now. Like each letter has a, a dedication of, for me, what healing means. Uh, and then this is on my car. This is, has soul. Uh, so that's just Again, making the mean, making the words and making the meaning because the art that I do is not about art for art's sake. And especially now in this moment of life that I'm in, it really has to be about something that is healing. Um, and for me first, um, next slide. Um, a place of my own, just permission to heal, the recognition of the ability to heal because we understand, allowed me to practice, um, to show up in a healthy way for myself and for others. And so now I'm gonna walk over to, I don't know if you can do that, Alan. He's right here. Uh, that's it's, perfect, Paz. Okay, cool. So this is my piece. And I put, I had pictures up, but I took them down. Actually, I should have just stood here the whole time. Um, but I put like pictures of my nephews, my nieces, people that we've lost. And so like for me, if we were, if you were here with me, I would have asked you bring a picture of somebody that you're praying for, someone that you want you're thinking about their healing. Bring an example of your own healing. And I wanna ask you to feel free, I don't know if the chat line is there, to chat, throw in there, what, what's Heal Thy for you? But this is what it is for me. It's about this land right now I'm on. It's about connecting with myself, taking care of myself, um, being present for my sisters and my mother and my uh, people that matter to me uh, during this pandemic. Um, it's just really critical that we have to find a way forward because there's so much injustice happening right now and it's so unnecessary. And the young people are waiting. They're, they're the ancestors that are coming up and we're the I'm one of the ancestors that's already going. I have to act like an ancestor because the last thing I wanna close with is there's seven, this is found art. So these were these were tablecloths. This was like uh, newspapers, paint, um, the clothesline. But um, each of these seven represent seven generations in my family that we have been on this land. And one of my elders told me that when you can identify your seventh generation, that um, 
then that seventh is the healing generation. And so for me right now, that's why it's, this is really important is that I think um, we're here in our family at the seventh generation and I'm on my ancestral land here. And um, this is the time to do, to do it. So thank you.